Hello and welcome to Alive with Bhavna. Thank you for listening to today's show where I'll be talking about welcome home to yourself. Basically my experiences on retreat. For those of you new to the show, I am Bhavna Nagar. I worked as a clinical psychologist both in South Africa where I come from and here in New Zealand. I started mindfulness about 13 years ago and um, it's become a core cool part of my life. My business is called Alive Psychology and I've integrated both psychology, traditional psychology and mindfulness and in that way you get the best of both worlds um, at Alive Psychology. Happy New Year! New Year 2022 and for many people it might feel like same thing different day not much has changed. We're now in the traffic light system, orange to red, hopefully back to orange, hopefully one day back to green. But will we ever get back to normal? Or what is normal? Back to the pre-2019 normal. Some people feel that their lives are in limbo until that happens until this period that we're in is over. We wait and we hope. And then we feel shattered when the traffic light goes in the wrong direction. Limbo is a painful position to be in because you're not sure which way to go. You cannot make plans. I met my family in the Coromandel over Christmas. And until everyone was not there, I feared that something would go wrong. Somehow we just won't all be together. And similarly, when I attended a retreat in January, until I didn't get there, I couldn't really believe that it was going to happen. That it was for real. I have asthma and hay fever. So on the first day of the retreat, the manager came to me and asked me why I was coughing. And then I feared that I'm going to be kicked out, asked to leave. So still I couldn't believe that me being on retreat was real, that I was really there, it was really happening, even though it was day one of retreat or day two of retreat. Over the next few days, slowly, I started to trust that this is for real, that I could relax, I could allow myself to be on retreat. I could just breathe out and be. This subtle or not so subtle undercurrent of distress is part of many people's new normal in the strange world that we're living in, whichever side of the vax line you're in. So how do we find peace and safety if it feels like the ground which we're standing on is constantly changing? When we're constantly reminded of how unsafe it is to get close to someone how we need to protect ourselves from each other. Apparently, the original research on how people respond to stress was conducted with only male participants. This was the research from which we got the fight, flight, freeze response. When a female researcher duplicated this research with female participants, she found that their first go-to was not fight or flight, but was nurture and network. When something goes on for me, big or small, the first thing I do is pick up a phone. I reach out for nurture and network. And this is the system that's affected in our new world, especially on that personal form of nurture and network in which touch and closeness are the main factors. Give me a hug. Hold me. I saw on the news a while ago that the new version of Meta and the computer interactions will be where we use avatars. So instead of zooming where I see you on the screen, we'll now virtually sit on a virtual beach or office or whatever settings we want. And maybe our avatars can even hug each other. How cool is that? Somehow, I doubt that that virtual world will help me feel more connected that I will feel connected to my loved ones and I will feel that effect of that avatar hugging that avatar as someone holding me, touching me. 
The hardest part of being a migrant in this world is the disconnection and not knowing when or if we will see our loved ones again. Hug them. Be with them. With loved ones dying overseas and us not being able to go to the funerals or even visit them later due to MIQ restrictions, our sense of disconnection is even more intense. This also applies to loved ones who are not so far just across the ditch. But the separation is just as intense thanks to the border restrictions. So our need for connection is even more intense now than ever before. In the old world, I saw my family in South Africa almost yearly. This was the food for my soul. I also attended one to two retreats a year. Silent retreats are my way of connecting with myself touching into my heart and seeing what's coming up for me. Despite having a regular mindfulness practice at home, I'm only to able to access my deeper depths on retreat, where I have time, space and focus to look deep inside. It's been two years since I attended a retreat. So I was in desperate need for that retreat and the space to just be. I felt like I had been running for the last two years and this was my opportunity to stop and just breathe, to receive and connect. So what did I become aware of on the retreat? I was not aware of the not so subtle distress of living in the current world with regard to making plans or trying to decide what to do in this limbo land. It feels like everything is subject to change. You're planning your pl wedding next week. Oops, change of plans. Got to change the venue, change the number of people, maybe change the date. Or you made plans to go to that event. Oops, that's been cancelled as well. Everything is changeable in the world that we live in. On the plus side, this has helped us become more flexible and adaptable and open to change. But as humans, we are creatures of habits. We like predictability. We like stability. Many of us have been eating the same thing for breakfast for the last 10 years. That's routine. It's st stable. It's comforting. Despite things changing so fast in our world, and probably faster than any previous generation, we are still generally change of us. We have lost our connection. We have lost our sense of control in our lives and in the world around us. We never really had control, but the illusion previously was solid and almost dependable. So on retreat, learning to trust myself and where I was, and that I was really there, took some time and gentle meditation on kindness towards myself to build a sense of safety, I needed to go back to the basics, grounding and getting my nervous system out of the fight and flight response. I needed to tap in to the nurture and network response to feel safe. But this was a silent retreat, couldn't exactly go ask for a hug or reach out for nurture and network from other people. So I had to get my nurture and network from nature. The retreat venue is set in the lovely Tamwater Center, which is in the heart of a nature sanctuary. Nature has an amazing power to reset our nervous system and to restore us back to normal rhythms. The more I opened up to nature, the more grounded I felt, the more safer I felt. And the safer I felt, the more I felt that I could connect with me, with my body. Often on the retreat, I actually lay on the floor with my back on the earth, on the ground, just feeling my connection and support from Mother Earth holding me. I felt the lightness and warmth from the sun and slowly my distress and fear dissolved. I realized that even in this crazy world with all the disconnection, 
my connection to nature was something that I gave up. It was not taken from me. I did not lose my connection to nature due to COVID restrictions. After losing my connection to nature, I became so focused on my mind and my fear response that I lost connection to my heart, to my sense of peace and belonging. I lost my connection to my home. After connecting with nature on the retreat and feeling safe, it felt safer to connect with my body and with what I was holding. Like with connecting with nature, it took some time for my fear responses were still alert. I practiced kindness with myself, tolerance for my difficulties that I was facing, and fear that my body was in relieving, revealing itself to me. Slowly, as I welcomed more aspects of my disconnected self home, I felt safer to breathe and let go and go deeper. On connecting with my body, I realized that my chest area was extremely tight. Slowly, I looked into it and became aware of all the unexpressed emotions that I was storing there, from mild anger to rage, disillusionment, to bereavement. And at other times, I did not know what I was feeling. I just felt intense emotions, the pain, the sadness, the anger, all of that with loving compassion for myself. I felt that I had to come back home to myself, back into my body, back into my loving, compassionate Divine Mother's arms. The last time I felt this intensity of disconnection and homesickness was in 2010. I had just returned from South Africa from an amazing holiday. It was the FIFA World Cup. And yet I had this feeling of homesickness when I came back to New Zealand. I thought it couldn't be related to being in South Africa because I'd just come back from South Africa. I'd just been with family. But still, I felt homesick. So I decided to attend my first retreat with my current teacher. In that retreat, I realized the homesickness that I was feeling had nothing to do with the physical place. It had nothing to do with South Africa. It had nothing to do with my people. It had to do with me. I was homesick because I was disconnected from me. I was homesick because I stopped listening to my heart. I stopped feeling into myself. I was so busy in my mind that I forgot about my heart, about my being, about my breathing. And in that retreat, as I sat and reconnected with myself, I realized that this was the homesick that I was feeling. I was homesick for me. And that's what I did on this retreat as well. I was homesick and I didn't even know it. I did not know that I'd lost my heart, my connection, my peace. So that's what I got from the retreat. And post-retreat, I went for a massage. And the massage lady told me that my body felt completely different. She said that my body felt more open, more energized, more flowing. And that's what she could feel. I felt more connected, more whole, more alive. And the big question is, and it's always the big question towards the end of a retreat, is how do we hold on to what I got in retreat as I go out into the real world? Because the retreat's an artificial environment. You're safe, you're protected, there's no demands on you, food is provided. You have the time and space to just be. Nothing is required from you on retreat. So how do you take that into this world where everything is required of me, where I have demands constantly? 
How do I hold on to my openness, my freedom and my peace that I gained on retreat? The answer is simple but not easy. It's recognizing that these feelings did not come from the retreat. These feelings came from me learning how to surrender my thinking of your mind to my body. These feelings came from me connecting with my heart, connecting with nature, and giving less attention to my fear mind, to my worrying mind, to my distressing thoughts. Yes, the nature century definitely helps with that, as does the retreat setting. But it's not exclusive to that place where I can get that. So it's about recognizing that I am surrounded by nature, no matter where I live. Here in Hawke's Bay, it's a lot easier to find nature, to connect with nature, to be in nature. If you're in Auckland or another city, concrete jungle, it's a bit harder to connect with nature because all you see around you is concrete. But nature is still there. We just have to find it, tap into it. Post-retreat, or since I've been home from retreat, I've made a commitment to myself to go outside in bare feet and to stand on the ground, connecting with Mother Earth. Feeling Father's Son on my face, on my body, and welcoming his appearance each day. Smelling the rain, feeling the wind, listening to the bird song. This is different to saying, oh, what a lovely day today is. That's coming from a head point of view. What I'm talking about is from a heart and soul point of view, allowing nature to simply enter you, to be part of you, to connect and feel the energy of the sun, the earth the birds, the wind. And for me it's reminding myself that all of these are my mother's touch. Mother Nature is holding me, communicating with me her love and her support and her care by holding me on the ground, by warming me in the sun, telling me that she's there for me every single day in every single way. This type of daily grounding helps me to stay connected in reality and it limits the ability of my fear mentality from taking over or from being a runaway train. It's still there, but each time I bring myself back into reality, back into groundedness, I have a taste of safety, a taste of freedom. Just for that moment I can breathe easily and then I go into fear and panic and then I come back into grounding. I've also made plans this year to have breaks. Because of COVID, I haven't been able to go on my holiday to South Africa. I haven't been able to see family. So instead, I've just worked through. No need to take a break if I'm not going overseas. So I've made a commitment to myself that I will take a break for me. A little staycation. Because it's about honoring me and honoring my need for slowing down, for having a break, for being at peace where I am and with who I am. I hope that you found this talk helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please contact me on my details um, on my website. If you want to connect with yourself in this way and connect to your divine loving mother, please come on my retreat, which is on the 19th to 23rd of May, or March, sorry, and the Coromandel. And it is about connecting with the divine goddess within us and welcoming ourselves home and connecting with the divine mother outside to us, as I've spoken about today. Spaces are limited, so please check my website for details. My website's alivepsych.co.nz. Thank you and have a good day.